Hey, welcome back. And in this video, we are going to talk about web cache poisoning. So we are going to look at what is caching, what is cache hit, cache miss, what is cache key, and then we are going to see how we can hunt for web cache poisoning. What's the methodology? Okay, let's understand the basics first. In general, caching is the process of storing data or files in a temporary location. Now, in case of web browsers, caching stores web pages, images, or JS files in a cache so that the next time a user tries to access the same website, the page loads fast. Now, in case of CDN caching, which is content delivery network, that are basically servers that store content close to a user's location takes the client request and forward it to the origin server and then saves a copy of the response. So next time a client sends a request, CDN will deliver the response quickly instead of asking the origin server which takes more time. So a cache hit is when a client makes a request and CDN already has a copy of it. A cache miss occurs when a client makes a request and CDN doesn't have a copy of it and you will see it in the server's response. This is very important. Now, another term that you need to understand is cache key. Caches identify requests from request components, known as cache key. Typically, this would contain the request line and host header. So, when the CDN gets the request, it's going to compare the request components, and according to that, it's going to give the response back to the client if it does have a copy of it. Now this is how caching normally works in web browser. Now as a hacker, when you're hunting for web cache vulnerabilities, there are some other things that you need to know. Notice that I haven't explained you what actually is web cache poisoning yet. Because we are going to look at the basics first and then we are going to the main thing. So how would you identify if the server is storing a cache? When you send a request to the server, and let's say you captured the response in your burp suite intercept, and you see a response header, cache control, with value public, max age equals something, that is the time to live. So if you're seeing a header like that, uh, like x cache or cache or x cache status, you know that caching is happening here. Once you have that in mind, you can test for web cache poisoning. Now, web cache poisoning is a vulnerability where an attacker manipulates the web cache by injecting malicious payloads and harmful HTTP response is served to other users. For example, let's say there is a website that uses query parameters to generate content. Its URL looks like this. Now, this website caches response for this URL to speed up the process for future requests. However, it doesn't properly handle unexpected parameters. So in this case, an attacker sends a request with an additional malicious parameter that the server ignores, but the caching mechanism doesn't. This additional parameter has an excessive payload. The server responds normally with the product page for ID123, but the cache stores the response, including the malicious payload. Now, any subsequent user who visits this URL gets the cached page, which now includes the malicious JavaScript payload. That leads to XSS attack. But again, why it's happening? Why the server ignore it and still serving the response for this new malicious parameter? And how this XSS payload is working in the first place here? You might have these questions if you're a beginner. This was just an example. Now I'm going to explain you what's actually happening here. For that, you need to understand what is cache buster. A cache buster is a technique where you put a small addition to a URL, usually a query string or version number, and you send it to the CDN. Now you send it multiple times to the server and the server stores the new response instead of the old one. So, you used a cache buster to load the most recent version of a resource. And once you confirm 
that the new cache is being stored, you can inject your malicious payload, like XSS payload. Keeping this in mind, let's move on to the next term that is unkeyed input and keyed input. Keyed input refer to the elements like headers or query parameters in the request that the caching mechanism uses as part of the cache key to determine whether a request is unique or not. For example, if a cache is configured to use the ID parameter as keyed input, for example, in the following URLs, notice that the ID value is 123 in the first one and the second ID is 456. In this case, cache would store separate responses for ID because the ID parameter is part of the cache key. So it depends on the server configuration, how it is configured to store caches and what parameters or headers are used to identify a particular request. Now, unkeyed input on the other hand refers to the elements of the request like query parameters or headers that the cache ignores when deciding whether to serve a cached response. For example, if the user agent header is an unkeyed input in the following request, the first request is of ID 123 and the second request is also of ID 123, but these both requests are generated from a different user agent. The first user agent is Chrome and the second user agent is Firefox. These two are different users. First user is using Chrome, second user is using Firefox. Now they both have different value, but it is not part of the cache key Hence, the server is going to ignore that and still going to serve the same cached response. I hope this makes sense. Now, as a hacker, it is very important for you to find the unkeyed input because the server is going to serve the same response to all users, even the value of the unkeyed input is different, right? This is beneficial for us. Because we want our XSS payload to be delivered to all the users. So we have to find something that the server is not using as cache key to determine request. So that the same response will be served to all users and all those users will have an XSS payload in their response. Okay, now let me summarize this in step by step so it will make more sense. So here's the methodology. First, let's say you have a web application. Just capture the request in your web suite and in the response, see if there are headers like xcache, cache or cache control. If you see any headers like that, means the web server is using a cache mechanism here. Now, the next thing you have to do is see if there is a cache buster. You can do that by adding a small query string with any random value. Let's say in this case, x equals acc.js. If the response says x cache miss, means cache buster is working. Send it again and it will say hit, means it's cached now. Now you have to find an unkeyed input. Finding an unkeyed input so we can deliver this same response to every user, means the malicious response. You can do that by using Paraminer to guess headers. So let's say you found a header x forwarded host. So if the web server or cache relies on x forwarded host header to construct URLs, redirects or cache keys without proper validation, an attacker can manipulate the header to control the content that gets cached. This means the attacker can send a crafted request with malicious x forwarded host value, which may change the response that the cache stores and serves to users. Let's say the unkeyed input is x forwarded host. If a server relies on x forwarded host header to construct URLs, redirects, or cache keys without proper validation, an attacker can manipulate the header to control the content that gets cached. This means the attacker can send a crafted request with a malicious x forwarded host value, which may change the response that the cache stores and serves to other users. Okay. So to understand this even more better, we can take a look at a real HackerOne report. You can see there is question mark and a random parameter name and value that is one. And in the response, you can see the response is same and there is no change. And you can also see it says X cache status hit, means it is being 
cached. So any user who tries to make a request with this URL, this request URL will be given this response. So this is cache buster here right now. Okay, let's move on to the another image. And then this attacker found an unkeyed input. So in this case, the unkeyed input is X forwarded port and X forwarded host. So these two headers are not used as cache key identifiers by the server. And you can see this X forwarded port has a random value and X forwarded host has this evil.agronis.com. So this is attacker controlled server and it is sent to the web application. And the response we can see that this link header has evil.agronis.com means the value is being reflected here. And this value is also being reflected in multiple href values. And this screenshot also shows how it looks like in the UI. Okay, so I gave you multiple example with a real life example as well. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section or you can ask it on my Discord server. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.